I compare DeepSeek R1 reasoning model versus ChatGPT O1 reasoning model side by side. I ran it across 10 different reasoning prompts and the results were completely surprising to me. Now I'm gonna specifically use prompts that require reasoning. So you wouldn't use these type of models for every single task. You would use it when it needs reasoning, when it needs to think through a problem step by step before it just gives you an answer. Now a couple of things to mention before I start with the prompting. On the left side here, we're at chat.deepseek.com. This is the DeepSeek official chat website, but to use R1, you have to make sure you turn this on right here. If you don't turn that on, it uses the V3 model, which is comparable more to the ChatGPT 4.0 model. I'll save that for a different video. Right now, I wanna really focus on the reasoning model. Now, the second thing I wanna mention is DeepSeek is an open source large language model, meaning you could actually download versions of this and run it privately and locally. The version on the website is not gonna be private. The data will be stored by this company here. And I will cover the terms of service at the very end. We're actually gonna use both of these models and compare them side by side. So you see how DeepSeek uses your data and how ChatGPT uses your data. But ChatGPT01, especially if you use it for work, especially if you're gonna upload data here with this little clipper to analyze, this one opts out of training data by default because it is a paid upgrade. It is really designed, I'm using the Teams plan, but any of their paid upgrade opts you out of data training. This DeepSeek, the free version and the ChatGPT free version by default do use your data for training their models. Now, keep in mind the access to ChatGPT01 requires a plan that starts at $20 a month. DeepSeek is free. Now for the very first prompt, we're gonna run both of them through a logic and multi-step reasoning question. You have a row of 100 light bulbs, all initially off. When you pass through the row for the first time, you toggle every bulb, turn them all on. On the second pass, you toggle every second bulb. On the third pass, you toggle every third bulb, and so on. Up to the 100th pass, which bulb end up turned on? Now, they're both going to go to work. DeepSeek is a little bit slower right now just because it's going completely viral, so the server load they're getting on the DeepSeek website is pretty significant. So I'm not gonna compare it with any type of speed right now. And I wanna show you why these models are a lot different than the regular ChatGPT or other large language models. They actually go through a process of thinking through all the steps and this whole gray part, for example, inside of DeepSeek is all the steps that it had to think through before it gave you an answer. And if I go all the way down, look at all this thinking here it had to do. And here is the actual answer in white. So this whole area, I could actually leave it collapsed down and only see the answer. And here's the answer he gave us. And ChatGPT's answer is also right over here. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Yep, they both got this right. And ChatGPT, the old one model, you could also click here to kind of see the step-by-step -step process. It looks like there's only a couple of different things that it thought through. And in this case, it took 45 seconds of thinking. So you can see it had a lot more. ChatGPT01 here thought for 10 seconds. Okay, this one is gonna be a little bit of a math problem with a twist to it. A horse costs $50, a chicken costs $20, and a goat costs $40. You bought four animals for a total of $140. Which animals and how many of each did you buy? And again, I have R1 turned on. And ChatGPT, the reasoning model could be turned on a couple of different ways. You could pick it from a model dropdown. Again, you need the plus or the Teams plan or the pro plan. Here I'm using the Teams plan. And then you could also turn it on here to use thinking here. And you could go ahead and send it out that way. But you just need one of those turned on for it to go through the thinking process here. Okay, this time actually DeepSeek is working a little bit faster because it's showing you the thinking process here. This one hides the thinking process until you click on it. 17 seconds, this one is still actually thinking. So it looks like DeepSeek thinks longer. Okay, this is very interesting. DeepSeek got a different answer than 01. DeepSeek says two valid combinations, two horses and two chickens or one chicken and three goats. Really nice formatting down here with the answer. And O1 says buy one chicken and three goat, which is one of the answers, but it did not come up with the second combination. Now I'm pretty sure this is the right answer here. And let me just show you the thinking of DeepSeek here. I mean, look at the thinking process that he went through and how long did this take? 76 seconds. He went through like every single step here 
and ran so many different math equations here to come up with that. Okay, so that's obviously a point for DeepSeek. Let's get to the next one. Now, this one is domain specific problem solving, and this is related to physics. And again, I got the answer key from someone that specializes in physics just to be able to verify it because I actually have no idea how to solve this one, but I do know the answer. So let's send this one out. Okay, this one again is the right answer and ChatGPT also got the right answer. Let me just show you the difference in the way they had to think through it though. Look at DeepSeek right here. It's incredible how much it has to go through to get to the answer. So. ChatGPT does get to the answer a lot quicker. And if I click over here, pretty much no details on the steps. It used to actually give me a lot more details when I was looking at this before, but now 137 seconds versus seven seconds came to the right one. But again, it did miss one so far, but they both got this one right. Let's get to the next one. Now this one's a famous one in the thought experiment category, which came first, chicken or the egg? Let's see what we get for that. Okay, let's kind of go through this in real time. This is a classic question I've heard before. First, I know the chicken came from the egg. Wait, maybe evolution plays a role here. But then again, the egg is a chicken egg if it contains a chicken. Alternatively, if you define a chicken egg as an egg laid by a chicken, then the chicken would have to come first. This is really interesting. It's thinking about pretty much every scenario that it can be. DeepSeek says, for scientific standpoint, the egg came first as the first chicken emerged from an egg laid by nearly a chicken ancestor. Okay, well, this can be playful. A straightforward explanation is eggs existed before what we formally classify as chickens, so the egg came first. So they both said the egg came first, and I think DeepSeek just does a little better job explaining it in simpler terms, but same answer. This is, I think, a pass for both. Okay, this one, I'm gonna test their step-by-step -step reasoning here. And it's kind of a trick question. The restaurant bill for three people was $45. They each paid $15. So they paid 45 in total. The waiter put $5 in his pocket and gave $5 back to them. Therefore, each ended up with paying $14, which sums up to $42. It's kind of a trick question. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so 80 seconds deep seek. ChatGPT, seven seconds. Let's get to the bottom here to see the answer. ChatGPT says, in short, there is no actual money missing. And that was what I was testing for. I was trying to confuse it. And it says all the money is accounted for. Okay, and DeepSeek, the missing, oh, strange formatting here. Uh, all the money is accounted for. So same conclusion here. This one just you know, gets to it much faster. It looks like 80 seconds versus seven seconds. Okay, this next one actually will be a variable answer. So there's no right or wrong. I just wanna see how it deals with something that is more ambiguous here. Consider this sentence. I did not say she stole the money. Interpret this sentence in at least four distinct ways by emphasizing different words and explain how each emphasis changes the meaning. Now they both kind of came to a similar conclusion here. So. DeepSeek says, emphasize on I, emphasize on didn't, emphasize on she, and emphasize on stole. ChatGPT, emphasize on I, same thing. Emphasize on didn't, same thing. Emphasize on she, same thing. But the last one's a little different. Emphasize on my money instead of stole. And again, both accurate. This is not right or wrong. I just wanted to see if we could actually figure out this kind of an ambiguous question that has multi answers to it and they both passed this one now this next one seems very obvious to us as humans but usually large language models have a very hard time with this one which one is bigger 9.11 or 9.9 .9? let's see if it gets this one right wow chat gpt got that one wrong 9.11 is larger than 9.9 .9. deep seek the right answer, 9.9. .9. Okay, so far, DeepSeek has not failed once. ChatGPT now has failed in two different questions. And here's another classic question. How many R's are in strawberry? Let's see if it gets this one right. Again, very easy for us to figure out, but hard for large language models to figure out. Okay, strawberry contains three instances of R in position three, eight, and nine. Okay, interesting. Few seconds versus 24 seconds this time, but they did both get it right. I wanna actually try to 
confuse it a little bit. Let me start a new chat and I want to misspell strawberry this time. Okay, I misspelled it this time. So there's one, two, three, four R's now in strawberry. Oh, look at this thinking right here. S no, T no, R yes. And then these other R's, yes, yes, yes. Okay, the letter R appears four times in the misspelled word strawberry. And then right here, the word strawberry, which contains three consecutive R's, contains a total of four R's. Okay, so this didn't tell us it was misspelled, but it did get the same conclusion, four and four, seven seconds versus, again, 21 seconds. So clearly, ChatGPT thinks a lot less in less time. It just gives you the answer quicker. This one thinks longer, but I'd rather get the right answer and wait. Now, a couple of things when it comes to the functionality of these websites. One thing that I really like with this DeepSeek website is the fact that you could turn on search and then you could check for something that requires search and requires deep thinking because otherwise the training data it has is actually older than even ChatGPT's training data back to like 2023. But with this search icon, it does have up-to-date information. ChatGPT, on the other hand, does have search, but you see it's grayed out right now because search for some reason doesn't work with the O1 model. Now, the one really nice update that I made a different video about is the website perplexity.ai, which is an AI search engine, does allow you to use the reasoning model with R1 and the reasoning model with O1 if you want to combine it with search. So that does solve the limitations with O1. But to get access to this, this is another $20 a month upgrade that has nothing to do with the subscription from O1. That doesn't give you this. This is a totally different company that uses that model. But there is a way around combining O1 with search, which is through perplexity right now. And hopefully OpenAI and ChatGPT roll that out. So you could do the same kind of thing I'm showing you inside of R1 with search. Now, DeepSeek also has this other problem with how often the server is busy. But again, it's going completely viral right now. The usage is through the roof. So hopefully this is something that gets solved or other companies add DeepSeek into their platform because it is open source. They could technically do that and download it and provide servers for it so it doesn't have this issue. But while I was recording this video, this message right here, the servers are busy, was pretty consistent. Now, I just want to try one last thing here. So ChatGPT01 has another model called 01 Pro. So I switched my account right now to ChatGPT Pro, which is $200 a month. But with $200 a month, you get 01 unlimited 01. The other one actually has a limit, which again is probably a plus to R1 because you could just use the website as long as it's up and running. But this 01 Pro is supposed to even beat 01 in this $200 plan. So let me run the couple of questions that 01 missed here. Let's see if it actually could solve those. Now this one got it right. 9.9 .9 is larger than 9.1. So 01 Pro solved that. 01 did not. And our math problem here with a little bit of twist, let's run that one when it had two different answers. Okay, O1 Pro got it right. Two valid ways to buy that. Three goats, one chicken, two horses, two chickens, two possible solutions. Same thing we got out of DeepSeek, but O1 only gave us half that answer. So again, O1 Pro is matching DeepSeek, but it is a $200 a month, so kind of not fair to compare it to a free model. Now for this next one, we'll do a two-in-one. We'll see how it analyzes text and gives you useful information out of text. And in that same step, we'll compare the DeepSeek privacy policy and the OpenAI privacy policy side by side so you see exactly how they compare. Now, one of the main reasons I'm also doing this is beyond the data protection for your own personal data, some people may not really be concerned about that. If you do have protection against data at work. A lot of people upload documents that is not their data. They're doing it at work to analyze work related to tasks. So I want to mention that to make sure at your company, you understand the privacy policies of both because the version of ChatGPT I'm using has an option to opt out of some of these things where DeepSeek does not have that option. But with free chatbots, typically you don't have an option to opt out, even though the free version of ChatGPT does have that option but you have to go find it in settings and toggle it on. And I kept my prompt really simple. Compare these two privacy policies and create a table comparing pros and cons for each one. And I literally copy and pasted both of those documents into both of these chatbots here. Okay, they both gave us detailed tables here. 
ChatGPT did not do a great job with formatting. It kept these HTML tags for some reason into this table. And I'll kind of just focus on the cons here of each one. So DeepSeek collects keystroke patterns, privacy risk, OpenAI, broad collection of content files, audio, and images. And it's saying DeepSeek is vague about how they use the input to train their models. OpenAI kind of has the same issue there. Then it says the data may lack factual accuracy. That's just the risk of large language models. That is not really relevant to the privacy policy. Every large language model makes stuff up sometimes and has factual issues. Now it says they share data with advertising partners. That's typical of most companies that have a free service. Now, one key thing that they both mentioned relating to data storage, and this again is gonna be relevant if you use this for work and you have policy at work against this kind of thing, but the data with DeepSeek is stored in China and that is very clear here in their privacy policy to make that very transparent. Again, ChatGPT says the same thing, stores data in China. This OpenAI obviously is a US-based company, so it stores data in various jurisdictions, often in the US. And if you are a European user of this and have to comply with things like GDPR, this discloses US storage with GDPR compliance effort. And from some of this I saw, DeepSeek does not follow some of this and is actually unclear how compliant with international frameworks they are like GDPR. And another thing is how they use your training data. So they will use your training data to improve their model by default. DeepSeek does this, ChatGPT's free version does this. The one reason that I usually like to use models like ChatGPT, even though it fell short here in this initial test I did, is they have paid upgrades that lets you opt out of that. In fact, this plan that I have, this Teams plan, the Plus plan, any paid plan, it is opted out by default. At least that's what they say, right? So if you're using this for work, you're like, well, I'm using the Teams plan designed to do this, designed to keep our data private. Now, the way you get around that, if it's more sensitive data, not your own, but you're trying to analyze it and it's company's data, is you could use DeepSeek's local install. Now, you're not using any one server, you're not on a website, you download it to your computer, you run it that way. DeepSeek lets you do that as well because it's open source. ChatGPT does not have that. There is no way to completely use it private. So you have to take their word for it with their upgrade that they're not using your information for any type of training data. Typically with sensitive data, especially if it's not your own and you're trying to analyze it for work, local install models are usually a safer bet because you're not relying on the servers of these companies. So this is a side-by-side -side comparison. And DeepSeek right here, here's the quick takeaway directly from them, their chatbot. DeepSeek emphasizes compliance with Chinese regulation and offers straightforward data storage clarity, but is less transparent about model training and global user rights. OpenAI provides a stronger user control, data correction, opting out. This is the point that I really wanted to emphasize. You could opt out of some of this the settings inside of DeepSeek just don't exist for that, and detailed disclosure for US and EU users, but complicated compliance with cross-border data transfers and technical jargons. Privacy conscious users might prefer OpenAI for its opt-out actions and accuracy correction, while those in China may find DeepSeek's localized approach more accessible. Now, all the prompts I used are in the description, but if you've used other prompts, if you got different results, please let me know in the comment section below this video. And I have different videos about running DeepSeek locally on your computer, the different models that are available for that. The full blown version that is running the website is not gonna really be able to run on a local computer right now. Even though you can download it and I tried to do it, you're gonna need a whole lot of computer power to do it. And I don't know any consumer computers that could do it right now, but the other versions are actually pretty good too and could run locally and privately on your computer. So I'll link that video below as well. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.